This news update is brought to you by. This is how we flow. Oh, the offers are quite exciting, and the prices will leave you smiling. Everybody's got a cheerful glow. Get the stylish Huawei Y360 for just two hundred five dollars prepaid, plus one gig free data this season. It's Friday, December the 4th, 2015, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story this morning, there's hope of an out-of-court settlement in the Dr. Maria Ehrgard expulsion case. Barbados Today understands that the matter is currently engaging party officials at a very senior level, who are said to have no appetite for seeing the party's affairs drag out any further in the public domain. Yesterday, the name of party stalwart and former representative for Christ Church West, Sir Henry Ford, was also being mentioned as a possible 11th hour mediator in the dispute which has pitted Dr. Agard against the mere motley led National Council of the Barbados Labour Party. However, with both Sir Henry and Motley currently said to be out of the country, sources said it may take longer than a week to broker an amicable settlement which would nullify the need for any legal course of action. Just yesterday, Agard issued a seven-day seven ultimatum to the party, warning that her dismissal should be overturned or else she would be heading to the law courts. The move has been sharply criticized by two leading political scientists who warn that though the embattled Christchurch West MP has a constitutional right to take her case to the law courts, the true power of a political party did not reside there. Dr. George Bell, who is a former lecturer in political science at the Cafield campus of the University of the West Indies, stressed that the issue was one of power relations and not law. A Barbados Coast Guard soldier who was charged with using insubordinate language to a superior officer was freed yesterday after only about 10 minutes of deliberations by a three-member court martial. Ordinary seaman Christopher Brooms was found not guilty by the tribunal presided over by its president, Major Christopher Birch, when it met in the Hodgson Hall Conference Room of the Barbados Defence Force Headquarters, St. Anne's Fort, the garrison. It was alleged that on Tuesday, April 7, 2015, while at HMBS Pelican, that's the Coast Guard Headquarters, at about 4.50 p.m., when instructed by leading seaman Adam Seeley not to leave the compound dressed in physical training, that's PT attire, Brooms replied, you can't be meaning expletive me. The 10-year service officer was also charged with behaving in a manner unbecoming a soldier, but was only tried on the first count. Now, after hearing all the evidence and arguments from the prosecution team led by Sub-Lieutenant Rita Evans in association with Captain Andrew Darlington and the defense team led by Vincent Watson, Tribunal President Birch, who is also a magistrate in the non-military court, chastised Brooms before giving the decision of not guilty. A government legislator has suggested that a recent recommendation by Acting Attorney General Michael Lashley to combat the increasing rate of deadly gun crimes did not go far enough. Lashley recommended this week that Barbados should follow Trinidad and Tobago's example and detain gun offenders for 100 days before they are even considered for bail. However, speaking last evening during a panel discussion on combating crime and violence in communities here, Senator David Jewett submitted that the authorities needed to be even tougher on the criminals. Senator Jewett is contending that no bail whatsoever should be granted to murder accused. In sport now, the Barbados Pride will look to get back to winning ways when they take on the Windward Islands Volcanoes in the WICB Professional Cricket League Regional 4-day Tournament, which resumes today following an early season break. Playing in Grenada, the Pride will be anxious to bounce back from a humiliating nine-wicket loss to table leaders Guyana Jaguars during the last round of matches. It won't be easy, however, as the Volcanoes, who currently sit in fifth place, will be entering the contest on a high after a sensational eight-wicket win over the Leeward Islands Hurricanes inside two days. The home side will also be bolstered by the inclusion of our spinner Shane Schillingford. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
It was days before Christmas. I had so much to do. Shopping, more shopping, and I was feeling blue. There's a mother, a father, a wifey, and friend. Lots of things to buy, but there was no money to spend. Ah, I found the answer. The BT shopping spree. 15,000 in goodies. Free, free, free. It's easy to enter. Nothing hard to do. Follow my instructions and a winner can be you. Visit facebook.com backslash Barbados today. Do it quickly and fill out your form to enter this spree. Look, I'm shopping at the cost you like mega store. Come down, fill your trolleys with goodies and more. And like me, you too can say ho, ho, ho. Welcome back with news from our regional neighbors now. The St. Lucians are being put on alert for another vector-borne disease. The Pan American Health Organization has confirmed the Zika virus has been detected in the Americas region. The Ministry of Health is responded and is urging the public to take precautionary measures. So far, nine countries in the Americas have confirmed locally acquired Zika virus infections passed to humans by Aedes mosquitoes. The virus was detected on Chile's Easter Island in February of 2014. Besides Brazil, Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Paraguay, Suriname, and Venezuela have reported cases. For six of the countries, case detections were very recent during November. Um, we're letting persons know that to, at, up to this point in time, we have not confirmed Zika virus on island, but we have heard from CAFA that it has been confirmed in at least one CARICOM territory at this time. So we know that it's essentially a matter of time before it spreads to the rest of the Caribbean, including countries like St. Lucia. Zika virus is a member of the Flaviviridae virus family and the Flavivirus genus. In humans, it causes a disease known as Zika fever. Common symptoms of infection with the virus include mild headaches, rash, and fever, among others. A Trinidadian convicted in the United States and sentenced to life in prison for plotting to blow up the JFK airport in New York has been declared a terrorist by the courts in Port of Spain. The ruling was handed down on Thursday against Karim Ibrahim. Karim Ibrahim has now officially been labeled a terrorist by this country following the ruling of High Court Judge Nadia Kangaloo at the Port of Spain Hall of Justice. It was the first such ruling of this kind under this country's Anti-Terrorism Act. This also allows the state to seize all assets belonging to the convicted terrorist who is now serving a life sentence in a U.S. prison in the state of Missouri. This followed a move by the Attorney General's office some two weeks ago in which they filed an application under Section 22B of the Anti-Terrorism Act 2005 which allows a judge to deem an individual a terrorist and put a freeze on their assets. The AG's office, represented by senior counsel Pamela Elder and attorney Michael Ruplal, had filed additional affidavits last Tuesday to ensure that Ibrahim was listed as a terrorist. Now the big story on the international scene. We are hearing that the husband and wife who carried out the deadly attack on the social services center in California Wednesday that killed 14 people and wounded 21 may have had terrorist links. More on that story in this CNN report. FBI investigators are looking at indications Saeed Farouk may have been radicalized. Phone communications reveal the gunman had been in touch with FBI terrorism subjects over the last several years, though officials say they were not considered high-priority subjects. He was not on the radar screen of our agency. 
uh, prior, prior to yesterday. Law enforcement officials say Farouk's behavior at a company holiday party Wednesday raised concerns with at least one witness. We did have some initial information that he, he left under some kind of duress. We also had somebody else say that, you know, he just kind of disappeared. We don't know where he went from there. He later returned to launch his attack. Patrick Bakari shared a cubicle with Farouk and worked with him for three years. He was drying his hands in the restroom when the shooting began. I thought somebody booby trapped the towel dispenser because I was being pummeled while I was pulling the towels out of the dispenser. And so I looked back in the mirror, I could see I was bleeding in my temple, my nose, and then there's other little fragments. They hit me all over the place. One reason investigators believe this might have been more than just a workplace dispute is the cache of explosives and ammunitions they found. Officials say it's clear there was planning before the attack. If you look at the amount of obvious pre-planning that went in, the amount of armaments that he had, the, the weapons and the, the ammunition, uh, there was obviously a mission here. We know that. Uh, we do not know why. Right now, investigators are scrutinizing Farouk's overseas travel. CNN has learned he traveled to Saudi Arabia in 2013. During that time, officials believe he met his Pakistani-born wife, Tashfeen Malik, who helped Farouk carry out the attack. And on that note, we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. And Emmanuel Joseph, have a fantastic day.